Hey guys, um, okay, I'm going to explain some applications of derivatives in this video, and it's not completely necessary that you understand this section, but I think it would be good for you to see it just before you go off to university, um, just to see how you can use derivatives in real life. Okay, so if we look at these categories, um, physics, biology, chemistry, and business, um, we see lots of applications of derivatives. So for example, in physics, we've already seen a few, like velocity and acceleration. So we've seen velocity and acceleration already. Um, as well, there's other things like um, the rate of flow of electrical current or the change in density of materials. So there's things with electrical current um, and density. Um, so if you're going into these fields, you can expect to be doing calculus and have a lot of applications relating to the field that you're studying. So another example for biology, let's say, could be something with the growth rates of populations. Since derivatives are all about finding the rate of change at one point, um, that's why all of these, all of these applications have to do with um, rates of change. Um, also, things like the rate of concentration of a drug in your bloodstream. Um, concentration of a drug in the bloodstream. Um, applications in chemistry could be like rates of reactions in chemicals. And finally, in business um, and economics, there could be things like rates of change pertaining to profit, revenue, costs, price, and demand. So, um, I think I'll just write like profit, revenue, cost, etc. Okay, so there's tons of application questions we can do, but they're all basically done in a similar fashion. Kind of creating equations and determining derivatives and just like assessing figuring out what you're trying to what you're trying to find here. So let's look at some business stuff. I know there's a lot of people in our class going into actually all of these fields up here, um, but we do have quite a few people going into business. So if we just take a one, a quick peek at some business functions and I, I'm not, I actually haven't gone into business. So I'm sure you'll learn way more than this in university, <laughs> but just a snapshot here. Um, certain business functions, like um, the demand function or the price function, this guy right here, P of X, um, has to do with um, the number of units of a product or a service that can be sold at a particular price. So P would be the number of units or the product, um, and X would be that price. Um, another function that they use in business is the revenue function, which I'm sure you've heard of where X is the number of units of a product sold at a certain price per unit. So the number of units at a certain price per unit. Um, the cost function, which is the total cost of producing a certain number of units of the product. And finally, profit, which is going to be equal to your revenue minus your cost. So the profit um, from the sale of a certain number of units of a product or a service. Okay, so those are just some functions that are often learned in business and, and say microeconomics. Um, and then we can look at the derivatives of those functions. So if you take the derivative of the revenue function, you get the marginal revenue function, R prime of X which refers to the instantaneous rate of change of the total revenue with respect to the number of items sold. Um, if you look at the marginal cost, C prime of X, that's gonna be the derivative of the cost function. Um, so the instantaneous rate of change of the total cost with respect to the number of items produced. And then finally, P prime of X, the marginal profit, 
refers to the instantaneous rate of change of the total profit with respect to the number of items sold. So during your business classes, you might be referring to these, like you might be understanding what these functions mean. And maybe during your calculus class in first year calculus, um, you might be you might have your calculus questions tailored to be kind of word problems in business. So let's just take a look. A company sells 1,500 DVDs per month. I just stole this question from a textbook. And they sell them at $10 each. So we got 1,500 DVDs being sold at $10 each. Now, they did some market research and they showed that the sales of these DVDs will decrease by 125 DVDs per month every time you increase the price by 25 cents. So if you want to sell the DVDs for $10.25 each, you won't sell 1,500 movies that month. You'll sell 1,500 minus 125. So in grade 10 math, I don't know if you remember grade 10 math, but we looked at quadratics and we looked at a bunch of word problems which had to do with like maximizing things. So we would, we would do a question just like this in grade 10 math by creating a revenue equation and we would find what price you should sell your DVDs at to maximize your sales. So this question we did use in quadratics. We would develop a quadratic formula or um, equation and then we would um, find the vertex. But now there's different ways we can do this. We can actually use derivatives to find maxes and minimums. So um, let's just go through a few business functions. If you're not at all into this and you don't care, you don't have to watch this video. This is just kind of an intro into some applications. Okay, so let's say we're solving this question. We could let P be the price of one DVD, right? Because P is the price function. And so we should use the lowercase p to be price of one DVD. Be the price of one DVD. Okay, and then let's let X be the number of DVDs that you're gonna sell in a month. Be the number of DVDs sold in one month. And then finally, let's let N be the number of price increases. So let's let N be the number of 25 cent price increases. Okay, so those are just some variables that we needed to define. So now we can make some equations. So here's an equation we can make. We can make an equation for the number of DVDs you're gonna sell in a month. Okay, so X is equal to, so usually we would sell 1,500 DVDs in a month, right? But if we wanna sell more, if we wanna increase our price, then we're gonna sell 125 less so let's do that. Every time we increase the price by 25 cents. So we're gonna put an N there because that's just the number of 25 cent price increases. So if we increase the price by 50 cents, then we'll lose 150 sales that month. Okay, so that's one equation we can come up with. Another equation we could come up with would be a price equation. So we know the price, so P of a DVD is $10. Plus, we could increase the price of a DVD by 25 cents. And we're going to put an N there because we, what if we want to increase it by 50 cents or 75 cents? Then N will just be how many price increases we're going to do. Okay, so we just created some random equations, P and X. So let's say we wanted to go back to our demand, revenue, cost, profit, etc. And let's just try to figure a couple equations out just to see if we can, just for fun. Okay, so let's look at the demand or the price function. So that's P of X. So we already have an equation in terms of P, but we want it in terms of X, not N. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to isolate n in the first equation and then sub it in to the second equation so we can have an, a, an equation of p in terms of x. Okay, so I'm going to take equation 1 and I'm going to isolate n. I'm just going to do this in one step. n would be equal to 1500 minus x over 125. So I just isolated n from the first equation by rearranging things. And then now I can take my second equation, p equals 10 plus 0 0.25, but instead of an n, I'm going to replace it with 1500 minus x over 125. Now I'm not going to take a lot of time explaining my work here because it's just simple algebra. So now I'm just going to multiply the thing in the brackets by 25 cents. And then I'm just going to simplify it. So you go ahead and try that yourself. But what you should come up with is P, or I'm going to call it P of X now, because it's P is the function of X, um, equals 13 minus 0 0.002 X. So this is our demand function or our price function. So it's the price for one DVD when X of them are being sold. So if you subbed in, if you found what's P of 1500, if you sub 1500 in for X, so 0 0.002 times 1500 and then 13 minus that, you would get $10, cause that's how much they're selling them for $10 each. So this function P of X just gives us the price of one DVD. when X of them are being sold. Okay, cool. So we got the demand or the price function. So we figured that out. Um, what if we wanted to figure out the revenue? So we could actually figure out the revenue because we know that revenue is gonna be equal to X times P of X. which means x, the number, of, the number of DVDs sold and for the price. So the revenue in, at, right up front is gonna be, they're sold for $10 each and you sell 1,500. So 1,500 times 10 would be $15,000 you would make. That would be your revenue. Um, but if we wanted to write it as an equation for revenue, we would just sub in, P, we would do x times p of x, and p of x is 13 minus 0.002x. And then if we simplify that, we get 13x minus 0.002x squared. So now we have an equation for revenue. So we didn't really do stuff like this in grade 10, like come up with equations. We just wanted to look for the max revenue and we just got a number. But what's helpful in this application is that we get all these equations and then we can work with them and figure things out. So like, let's take this a step farther and get the derivative. So we know that the derivative of revenue is the marginal revenue. So the marginal revenue function r prime of x. Remember that's going to be the instantaneous instantaneous rate of change of our revenue with respect to the number of items sold. So it's the rate of change of our revenue. Okay. So let's get that. So if we found the derivative of the revenue, so 13x, so it's just going to be 13. And then that's going to be negative 0.004x. So that's the derivative. So we just found what the marginal revenue would be. So like, let's just plug in some numbers and play around with it and see if we can interpret its meaning. So if we sold, um, let's just say a thousand DVDs, then we could sub in a thousand for X. And if you subbed a thousand in, so 13 minus 
0 0.004 times a thousand, um, that would equal nine. So your marginal revenue would be $9. So when your sales are at a thousand DVDs per month, revenue is increasing at the rate of $9 per additional DVD. Um, like what would you want your marginal revenue to be at? I would think if you're trying to maximize it, you would want your marginal revenue to be at zero because that would be the peak. So if you're looking at something like this, if you're right at the top of it, you know the rate of change is gonna be zero. So if you wanna be maximizing it, so let's sub in zero for our derivative and we could even like just try to solve it. Like let's solve for x. Um, so 0.004x equals 13. And then if I take 13 divided by 0 0.004, I get 3,250 is what x equals. And that's the number price for one DVD when X is more being sold. So that means you have to sell 3,250 a month. So the price of the DVD is not going to be $10 anymore. So if we're selling that many, I feel like we could figure out our price per DVD by just subbing it into there. So 13 minus 0.002 times 3250, 650. So it looks like we should be selling our DVDs at $6.50 per DVD to maximize our revenue. And in business terms, we call like this whole thing, we call marginal revenue. Um, so there's cases where like, um, you go on to like do a lot, like it's interesting I find like the business side of things. I didn't, I didn't take it, but I find it really cool. Like, for, like just for some examples, like I can think of like printers or game consoles. I don't know how to spell consoles. Um, you know how printers, everyone says, like, it's cheaper to buy a new printer than a new ink cartridge? So I think, like, that's part of the game. So people, companies sell printers really cheap, so their marginal revenue is probably in the negative zone. Like, they're probably losing money on these printers. But then the marginal revenue on their ink cartridges is so high, like, their profit is so high that it, it makes up for the difference in their cheap printers, you know? And same with game consoles, I'm guessing. Did the games cost so much? Um, so yeah, I find like that stuff's really interesting. So although a lot of business economics classes phys focus on, you know, all, all of the theory and like the t definitions and like understanding all of that, there's a lot of math in it too, right? Like you have to be able to create these equations. Like would you be able to create these equations yourself? Because you should. And then would you be able to um, interpret the meaning? Like, what does this mean? And what, you know, and then manipulate equations so that you can find out what you want to find out. Anyways, it's pretty interesting. Okay, so I'm going to stop there because I'm not going to get into, like, we could go on to figure out, um, I don't know how we would figure out the cost function, but we could go on to figure out the profit function. Oh, actually, we need to know that too. Okay, so we're going to stop there. But that's just like a preview into kind of the application -y side of calculus. Oh, and um, should we do... So I'm just stealing this from the textbook too. Um, but another, like, here's a physics one that I just found in the textbook. So it's talking about um, an electrical circuit. So you've got an electrical circuit. Um, the resistance, I'm just point forming this, but the resistance, uh, resistance R, which is in ohms, is represented by the function um, R equals 150 divided by I. 
and I is the current, which is in amps. So this is the current in amps. And R is the resistance in ohms, which I think has that as the symbol. Oh no, it's been a while. Okay, so you've got some electrical circuit. Now the resistance of the circuit in ohms is represented by this function. So what if we want to determine the rate of change of the resistance with respect to the current when the current is 10 amps? Cool. So even if you don't understand electrical circuits, you know that if someone asks you, what is the rate of change? You know that the derivative can give you the rate of change at any point. And they want to know the rate of change of the resistance. So rate of change of the resistance with respect to the current when the current is 10 amps. Okay, so why don't we just find the derivative? Okay, so we know R is equal to 150 times I to the negative one. I just changed it, so I was in the denominator, but like, I don't want it there. So if I wanna find the derivative, that means I want to find dr by di. So the derivative of the resistance with respect to the current. So I'm going to do power rule. So I got negative 150 times i to the negative 2. And if I just rewrite that so it looks a little nicer, I'll write it as negative 150 divided by i squared. So I got a negative exponent, I can pop that on the bottom. And now it wants me to find the rate of change when the current is 10. So I'm just gonna sub in 10 for i. 10 squared, and that's 100, so I get negative 1.5. So when the current is 10 amps, um, the rate of decrease of the resistance is 1.5 ohms per amp. Cool. So there's like a physics-y application question. So yeah, I feel like um, I had a student reach out um, from university and I just looked at her questions and she's in a kinesiology um, course. And a lot of her questions, although they're just involving, you know, finding the derivative, there's like so much more to them. Like there's a lot of words and interpreting meanings of things. So just something to keep in mind.